next I'll talk um, a bit more about the type of model that fuels this kind of forecasting. But before I do a couple of disclaimers to call out, the first being that models are not perfect. They help us understand a potential scenario about the future, but are by no means completely accurate. They, they're also only as good as the data that's going into them. And as we just talked about, that data is sometimes unavailable or incomplete. The second disclaimer and something that is important to emphasize and that I think is an optimistic and energizing way of looking at things is that even though models are showing us what the future could look like, ultimately we collectively have the power to change the course of the future based on our actions and behaviors. So put another way, models outline a range of potential scenarios that align with the information that's currently available, but they do not represent the predetermined truth. And then a final disclaimer is that as available information changes and we learn new things, the models that organizations like COVID Act Now are building can change too. So that's just something to be aware of if you're looking at data from models yourself. An analogy that someone on our team uses that I like that illustrates this point well is that a model's output is like a car's headlight beam while driving at night. If you see an obstruction ahead, you don't have to crash into it. You can brake, you can swerve left or right to change the path the car is on. Similarly, as new information comes in, we course correct our model. The specific kind of model that people like epidemiologists who study diseases use to understand how a disease will evolve over time is called an SEIR model. At first glance, it can seem fairly complex as this diagram illustrates, but basically an SEIR model shows how individuals move between different stages, which we'll talk about now. The first stage represents individuals who are susceptible, which is the S in SEIR. And these are people who don't have the disease yet, but who are potentially able to contract it in the future. Some of those susceptible individuals may become exposed to the virus, which is the second stage, like if they come into contact with someone else who has it, for example. From there, an individual might reach the third stage, infected, and here there are a few different categories, but basically an SEIR model splits out infected people based on how severe their cases are. You could have someone who has a mild case or who doesn't have any symptoms, or you could have someone with a severe case who needs the ICU, and these are some of the various levels within being infected. The reason why it's important to make this distinction between the different levels is because the resources needed to treat someone with a very severe case are very different from those that are needed to treat someone who doesn't have any symptoms. So breaking it down in this way can help policymakers and healthcare workers understand what the resource needs might be in the future. And then finally, infected individuals could recover as many do, or unfortunately some pass away. So all in all, an SEIR model tries to capture how people move through these different stages and uses this framework to understand how many people might be in these stages over time to paint a picture of what the future might look like based on that. When you see graphs and charts in the news that show COVID forecasts of the future, you now know the fundamental components of the model behind how those forecasts are produced. For an SEIR model to produce the right results, it needs a bunch of different inputs. The first group of inputs include facts about the current numbers, how many cases there are, number of hospitalizations, et cetera. The second group of inputs is demographic data. So to understand how many people might be in each of those stages that we just talked about, we have to know the total population size. Third, another input into these models are things that we know about the disease from early studies that have been done. For example, to figure out how many people go from being mildly infected to severely infected, we can look at data from other countries who experienced COVID to give us a better understanding. Finally, the last input that goes into SEIR models 
is how much of a difference or change we think that interventions like social distancing or staying at home will make in terms of how people may progress through the different stages. This last one I think is especially interesting and relevant because of all the different inputs laid out on this slide, interventions and in our behaviors and our actions are the only thing we have control over. We can't change how many cases there are today or the population size, but what we can influence is the actions that we take. And the good news is that we found over time that interventions like sheltering in place or social distancing do make a big difference compared to not making any changes in our lifestyle at all. And this graph is a good illustration of that. It shows a forecast of the number of hospitalizations we could expect under different scenarios. So in the strict shelter in place scenario, which is represented by that green line at the bottom of the graph, you can see that hospitalizations are very low. Under social distancing in yellow, the hospitalizations are more spread out and there's less risk that they would overwhelm our hospital system compared to the scenario in which there are no restrictions at all which is represented by the red line. All of us know reopening is underway in all 50 states. And obviously there are a lot of other factors to consider when making decisions about reopening besides just hospitalizations. So we don't intend to show this graph to make a statement about what we believe is the single right course of action that you or policymakers or the US should take. Instead, we think it's empowering to know that the actions we take can make a difference and all of the things that we've been doing for the past months are not for no reason.